Right, so before we start this video, most of you are not subscribed to the channel. While we are getting views, and we are so thankful for the, all of it that you're giving to us, you're coming back, you're watching every week. A lot of you are not subscribed. Now, we want to grow as a channel in order to get bigger guests, better facilities, better episodes, better quality, better experiences for you. But we also do need the subscribers in order to help us with that. And all you need to do is click one button and then that'll be your next subscriber. So if you're not subscribed today, please, please, please go and subscribe to us because it will do us the world of good. That is just it. Quick little message. Please enjoy the episode. Thank you as always. Bye now. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Manful Podcast and today we have gone on James and Brendan. James and Brendan have travelled all the way from Coventry just to come up with this episode on our podcast and we are highly grateful for this. So what are they going to talk about? We covered the basis of their One Wellness Recovery Centre and by the sounds of it, it is absolutely brilliant. Now what's in it? They do ice baths, infrared saunas, Pilates, yoga, Himalayan salt recovery rooms, and much, much more. It is absolutely brilliant that the work that these lads are doing for their area, their city, and from what we speak about in this, of how they're changing people's lives, and they may not admit that, they may be humble, but they are changing people's lives through physical recovery and mental health recovery. It is absolutely brilliant, and having these come up and share why they started, their background, and what they do, and what means more, more to them. It's not just about the money, it's about the customers, it's about the recovery that they get, and how they feel about after everything, putting people through the challenges. Like, for instance, did you know that our cold water in a shower is about 15 degrees? Now it's cold, isn't it? You're like, whoa, their ice baths go down to 2 degrees. So they're getting people in who could be in early 20s up to late 60s and they're just come on you can do this you all got a bit nervous there aren't you and they're like oh, yeah yeah and then they go in they go and sit in there for four or five minutes and it's a huge huge challenge now we do talk about the ice therapy a lot but obviously that does not go against anything else that they do it is brilliant please 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 enjoy this episode it is really really good they are two cracking lads Great personalities, and I'm so happy that they came up and that they got to share their story, what they're doing, why they're doing it, and to raise awareness. And it's absolutely brilliant. So please sit back and enjoy this episode. And I'll see you all at the end. Bye for now. So, lads, firstly, I want to say a nice one for making the travel up. Thanks for having us. Yeah. You. I think you're actually the first people that have actually traveled up properly. Um, I've actually made the biggest journey so far, so I'll always remember you, don't worry. <laughs> always remember you. So, for anyone who doesn't know, who are you? Just a little introduction, you can go whatever way you want. I'm James. Brendan. Brendan. And what do you do? Obviously from the box. So, we created Coventry's first contrast therapy centre, mm -hmm. specialising in ice bath and infrared saunas. And that was the small starting idea of it all, and we just sort of ran with it. And then from there, we're going to create more of a wellness and recovery centre. Um, and it's just grew from there, really, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, got two ice baths and infrared sauna rooms, a uh, Himalayan salt room, uh, one large studio where we do classes at the moment, another smaller studio to be opened, the skin therapy room, massage room, and then, again, still more to be added to that as well. I love that. Can you bring one up to Liverpool? We got, we'll get one up here for you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll run it for you as well. <laughs> I'll, I'll go in partnership. So, why did you do what you are doing now at the minute? Because you haven't always been into this, have you? From obviously, no. we were talking off camera before. So, so my background's construction. That's yeah. what it always is. Uh, me and Brent have always been pals, like mainly like friends of friends and stuff to begin with. And we've always chatted about business, training, stuff like that. My other house from Glasgow. So when I'd been up there, something I'd been doing, something I'd loved, and saw Bren. We were, I literally saw him at the bar. We were having a pint, talking about different bits and pieces we had going on. And I said, look, I'd love to do something like this. And he just turned to me and he was like, that's the weirdest thing ever. Me and my little brother have been doing the exact same thing. And then we literally, that was Easter last year, wasn't it? And then we met the day after and got the plan 
got the plan in place and well I say the plan in place yeah. the small yeah. idea so, and then, yeah it started from I think everyone from lockdown was doing cold showers and stuff weren't they everyone was seeing Wim Hof everywhere I think that's where it sort of started for everyone mm. um yeah loved it James when James is on about Scotland I'd say they're a little bit more open to it because they've got cold water swims and locks whereas down where we are we're a bit landlocked aren't we yeah. so we're not really going we're not really going cold water swimming yeah, we just have to jump on like a local park. We'll be yeah. in like, you you yeah, were in the country that time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, loved it. Come up with how do we get this going? Pretty much mm. straight away within a couple of days, and then the idea is just grew, didn't we? Really? Yeah, yeah, we had so much to plan and look forward to, and also giving us room to grow with. And it was just how big did we sort of want to go with it? Mm. Which was cool. I think I flew up there within. Definitely within the same week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out yeah. myself to an ice bath place. Loved it. Was pretty bad at it to be honest. I think I'd done a minute. <laughs> yeah. Thought great business idea, but it was freezing. I am no good at it at all. Mm. And then yeah, it just went from there. It was then looking into it. We spent we didn't look back. It was about fifth, eighteen months down here. Eighteen months, yeah, mm-hmm. up and down yeah. the country, looking at other places that were doing something similar. Mm. Um. And just different bits and pieces, what we liked about certain places, what we didn't like about other places, uh, and how we could build on what other people had, and then also put our own spin on how we think people would benefit, like the sort of building and the sort of environment people would benefit from, whilst having the contrast therapy, mm. but also what we could add to it as well. well obviously, we were we talking before, you done, you're doing kettlebells, right? That's like your type of training. What was your type of training? And that actually come so we actually, the, one of the reasons, like I was saying, we used to talk about training and stuff like that. We just both had the same PT as well. Mm. So mm. Mine, mine's always just been gym work, stuff yeah. like that. So it was like traditional gym, what you'd expect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. Cause the only question is I'm going to ask now is, why did you just go down the route of like ice baths and infrared saunas and that instead of the typical, oh, we're gym lads, let's open up our own gym? Like that, that, that type of trail that people go down. So I'd say on that, it was more, okay, so looking into it, some of the classes we've got is mobility. Mm. We've got an increase in them classes from 30 to 40 year olds, people that are having to incorporate recovery into their daily routine. You can push and push and push, but you can burn the candle at both ends, whether Mm. it be doing the wrong things, whether it be in the right things. You know yourself, if you go to the gym, how many times you stretch off properly before you start and before you finish? Don't expose me like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I can I know myself. I'm thinking, yeah. get me out, get yeah. me out of here as soon as possible. So we thought it should have its own recovery space and prioritize it. We went for like a sort of express spa feel to the place. Mm. Um, come in, no gym equipment because gyms can be quite intimidating for people yeah. as well. At the same time, so we wanted people to make it a rest day out, a time out from whatever room they went in. They felt better than when they arrived. So just. Yeah, but like he, as he said about a spin on it, it was more trying to add a bit of luxury to the recovery space as well and, and just, just take time out for people, really. Mm, I like that. Like, I feel like I really need something like that because, like, my recovery, which I want to get into the habit of every day, is I'll wake up before the missus and then I'll go into the spare room and I'll do, like, all my stretching and my mobility stuff and then this tiny little space. Yeah. And so you I'll, do stretch then? <laughs> in the mornings. Because <laughs> the way you were, it was after your workout, and I was like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I do have the legs. But yeah, but uh, in the morning, I do want to do it. Because, like, my whole right side, from my ankle to my knee to my hip to my shoulder to my neck, it's just, it's all just... Like, I need a physio, I need a chiropractor, I need a one wellness in Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> I need it all. Yeah. We need more of this of what you're doing. Because... There's someone in Liverpool who's just opened up uh, but a, a cold and hot therapy, but it's just an ice bath and a sauna right mm. next to each other in this small little room. And obviously, it'll do business, obviously, if you rent it out. But for what you are doing, I, just, I love it. I we just really found do. that there's so many ways to, like, there's so many things that you drop out of your, of your regime or your schedule, you know? Like, mobility for me is some same as yourself. I'm tight all the time, and mm. I do my little bit of stretching in the morning, but even I'd blank that sometimes. But we wanted to have a space where people wanted to be and whatever you were doing in there was going to benefit your head or your body yeah. one of the two no matter which room you went in no matter what time of day you come in you'd feel better and you'd have done something good we wanted the feel of a spa but you're also pushing yourself as well mm. what, what do you find is the most obviously it all plays a part 
But what do you find is like the most beneficial thing or the most used thing that people seem to keep going back to in your centre? Um, the classes are real. Classes, important. people, the classes are filling up really well. We've got a good core group of people that are using ice baths and sauna regularly mm. and introducing more people to do it. Like he, like Brent was saying, like the ice baths and saunas out were a new thing for Coventry, but there's definitely a, like an uptick of that now with people coming, seeing the space and even sometimes seeing how we built the space and the feeling they could get there and then giving it a go and mm. re- seeing the benefit outside of it. Like I started, like the only reason I went to the ice bath in the first place was because it's like it's scientifically proven for training and recovery and stuff like that. So I gave it a go. I'd probably done ice baths or cold water swimming up in Glasgow five or six times before I thought my head's a lot better. Like, mm. cause I'm an overthinker, like anything, give me something pointless. That's not even to do with me. I'll overthink about it. Put me in an ice bath or cold water swimming, mainly an ice bath because you can't think about anything else. You're thinking yeah. about getting your breathing settling down calming your nervous system and it was literally after i got out one time i thought i wasn't i wasn't thinking about anything else i was just thinking about breathing mm. being still and that's when i started seeing the benefit more and more so for me personally like my training's been up and down especially mm. like with businesses and b- different bits and pieces but that's been a staple because i know that levels me and if i'm willing to do that in the morning I'm willing to stay up and send that extra email because I've already done something that was hard. I didn't want to do it. Do you know, yeah, mm. you've done it. Like you've smashed it, and you've already, you already know that you can do stuff that you don't want to do, and you, you're going to struggle doing it. So anything else is easy. Yeah, the discipline mm. side of it as well, definitely. And the thing with that as well, it doesn't get any easier. Mm. Although we have people ask us, "Do you do it every day?" And like, try to. <laughs> yeah. I'd be lying if I said, "Yeah, I'm probably pushing five times a week." But there's days where you don't want to do it. Mm. I can think of a million better things to do. I'm playing on my phone. I'm downstairs. I think, what about that email I've got to send? Go and just four minutes of your day. Just go and go and do it. And then once you do find a sense of calm from what you've done and push yourself to do something you genuinely didn't want to do at that moment, it's rewarding. Yeah. You push yourself out of your comfort zone. You're going to feel a lot better for it, yeah. which is strange how it all works. But you, th- world works. you think it's part of when you were saying there that you're not focusing on anything, you're concentrating, but do you think it's part of your fight and flight? 100%. 100%. Where 100%. your body's like, I've got to deal with this. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm in shock here, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. So, so all the minor, because most of the things we worry about are minor things, aren't they? Mm-hmm. They all yeah. go to the back, don't you forget about them. 100%. 100%. Yeah. That's why it's so good for the anxiety side, because throughout that time, you are generally, like you said, thinking of nothing else. Getting through it, for one, how cold you are, how you get through to the, the minutes and the target you've set yourself. But it cuts out all the outside noise. So that's what anxiety is, right? You're overthinking mm. of all these other, st- other things that you've got in your brain and tomorrow and your inbox and all the stuff you've got to tick through in your day and worries and life issues. But when you generally can't think of everything else, that's why it's so good for the anxiety because it slows you down, gets you to remain present. Obviously, you have to be doing the right things as well as ice baths, but it can help you actually bring this practice into, into your day-to-day routine that will slow you down and hopefully give you a bit more mindset. Like you hear people say, like the like question about ice baths and stuff like that. It's not <clears> like <throat> a magic pill. You're not going to mm. start doing ice baths and that everything's going to change in your life. But if bringing incorporating into it makes you know that you can do certain things and it does give you that time back and it makes you more likely to take the steps to make the other things work as well. Yeah, I'd say like I don't have access to an ice bath, um, but. There's been times where I've tried to do like a cold shower in the morning or yeah, at yeah. the end of my shower I try and turn it down as much as I can. I just like I can't I can't do it. <laughs> like, I'll do it and I'll like I'll turn it down, I'll turn and get ready and I'll feel like I go, oh yeah. like, like, I'll feel like it just how cold it is and I'll get straight yeah. out. And there was times where I was able to ease up and I was like 30 seconds. And then I realised yeah. how cold my shower cooked actually cold the other day. I was like, oh my God, no, we I'm not even doing it. I was having a cool shower. <laughs> we do it to each other sometimes. He'll come in the door, he's like, You had a nice bath today. I'll be like, Yeah, he's like, no, you haven't. You haven't. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, go on then. I'm going to do it. I was both trying, like, the odd time when we know, because you because they go down so cold, and we have, like, we've got certain lads that come in every day that want it as cold as possible. A couple of lads have got sciatica and stuff like that mm. that are religiously in there. So if you know they're at two, like, you think, 
oh, yeah. God, do it. But then it's always, it is always worth it. There's never a time I've got out and like regretted it or anything mm. like that, you know? Two was pretty brutal. Two, I had one yeah. and two and I got in my car. It was one of the hottest days of the year and I felt like I had the air con on. I had the heating on full blast. It was <laughs> too cold. <laughs> I felt horrible. He did it to me. We were filming mm. there. We were filming... What were we trying to... Oh, just when we opened, wasn't it? We were filming a video. We were planning content. on filming a video, just a bit of content to, like, show the space and stuff like that. So I said, I'll go in the ice bath, this video, I'll come out of the sauna and get in. But he turned it down to two without telling me. Yeah. So we were just filming a video, and I was like, Sam, I thought it was at, like, 12 degrees, jumped in the ice bath. I was like, <gasps> ruined the whole video, like, <laughs> nearly straight back out of it. Like, but... Is that what the numbers are, two? They, they two degrees, go down to, yeah. That's the cold you can get before it freezes. It's not over. like two, two just off reason yeah. yeah oh wow yeah. but then okay, people yeah. say yeah. like that's the difference <laughs> yeah, people but like if we say oh they're at like seven when people are coming if someone's like starting it for the first time and they hear oh 10 degrees like i've been outside 10 degrees that's fine but the water pulling the heat yeah. pull, the water pulls the heat away from your yeah. body do you know what i mean so it's uh yes, that's what i think isn't there some like 12 times faster or something like that yeah. water yeah it takes heat away from you or something they say a cold shower or cold your cold tap at home is between 15 and 17 degrees which you think is a lot colder, wouldn't you? It runs <laughs> yeah. your so that's your shower. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I'm found out. So now the more people I speak to lately, that have like doing stuff like this, like your shower shred fast, and the more I realise how much of a bitch I am. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I need to not be gay. I thought it's like when I was starting to get into fitness, I was like this lad that no, do you know, no, I can do that. I can yeah, crack yeah. on with that. Give me a challenge, I'll do it. But no, I'm realizing no. <laughs> I love comfort too much. But it's one of them things, isn't it? It's the same as anything, like yes. It's supposed to be a test. It's yeah. supposed to yeah. be hard. We can sit around and stuff like that. and set. It's easy to take the easy route, isn't it? That's what everyone does. And don't get me wrong, I, I'm guilty of it as well. I'm not, obviously not saying that I do hard things all the time, but you feel the benefit of doing that hard thing, don't you, after? Mm. You feel like pushing yourself that sense of accomplishment as well, you know? Do you think everyone should do it? Everyone should do saunas. Everyone should do ice baths. If they're medically okay <laughs> to do it, yeah. then I don't see why not. We've got two women... Janet and Susan that come in and see us and honestly every time I'm in, they're in I'm inspired by them like they're in their 60s like smashing high rockses mm. uh, one of them come in the other day that was on crutches and stuff like that they were like unbelievable and just stuff like that yeah it's inspiring so the 60 they're doing cold therapy hot therapy and they're doing high rocks and they're doing classes mm. yeah, yeah what's your excuse <laughs> I don't press ups this morning <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah I'd have to say on that Mark one of my good friends, Darren, um, just going for a really bad winter and it's too much time, mm. hard, really hard time, pushed himself to do it. I think he was our longest streak at still ongoing now, still 15 going. days. Now he got to 25 days before his holiday. Did he? Carried on, yeah. He made, he made it yeah, every he day. Got, he coming late at night and we were opening up for him and stuff and yeah, he had every reason to go on the piss or whatever, you know what I mean? But he kept his head together. Pushing yourself to do something you didn't want to do. Mm. Mm. He was asked as well what, what do you get out of it? And so the only way I'm going to know now is if I stop. Yeah. The only way I'm yeah. not. That's I couldn't tell. Like, uh... by, by enable to, being able to benefit yourself again, hard times. What what are you sort of pushing yourself to do and push yourself to the next limit by obviously doing the right things? Because you know yourself there's always excuses that creep in when you're going through a bad time and mm -hmm. the path of least resistance. You're looking to do things that ain't really going to benefit you. Yeah, but yeah, I'd probably say him. Oh, we we sponsor like professional athletes and the uh, cod rugby team and stuff like that. But the story, like obviously Darren's story, not ours to <laughs> mm. go into. But he had every reason to go and do whatever, and nobody would have said a word. Mm. Like you would have said like, okay, fair play, like, like he's going through what he's going through. Dylan kept his head together, even was bringing his old man in with him and stuff like that. And it's class to see. I love that. Cause yeah, because that is it, isn't it? It's Obviously, we're coming into a time now where it seems to be a lot of men want to be more manly now. Don't mm. they want to be like, oh, I want to get this, I want to get that. It seems to be like, Andrew Tate started that trend or whatever. Mm. People <laughs> want to expire to be him. But it's good to see that, like, yeah, lads yeah. nowadays are now starting to get that bit more of, like, an oomph about them again. And yeah, now yeah. I'm going to get that. I'm, I want to be better. I want to do better. Yeah, I'm and gonna... say it when you're not. Say yeah. it when you're not. Like, we had... Definitely. <clears throat> We had like an open day and stuff like that when we first opened and there's a bloke I'd said to Brenna, oh, I've invited a bloke I know that like Tony. And he said, Oh, which Tony? And I said who it was. And he sort of looked at me and I looked, he's like, I know him. He says, How do you know him? And we both sort of looked at him, we both like I was in therapy with him. 
but we'd never said it to each other. Mm. And, like, and we'd always, that, that was like year, going on years and stuff like that. Both knew the same yeah. bloke, lived around the corner from us both, both been in therapy with him, hadn't said a word to anyone. And then the more you speak about it, it turns out probably, would you say 10 of our yeah, mates? Loads, yeah. 10 or more of our pals have all been to see him. Like he's a great bloke, but like now we'll talk, happily talk openly about it. Mm. And that's, that's a solid thing. Is Coventry big? Yeah. It's dead quick. About three hundred and sixty thousand yeah. people, I think there is there. Like Why do you know everyone? Like, you all got the same, like the same group. Yeah, 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 it's very big, but very, very small at the same it's like time. A village, yeah. yeah <laughs> to, to us, that's kind of like Liverpool, actually. When you say that now, yeah, 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 it is. Um, do you get a lot more men coming and a lot more women coming into the place? Because, like, where you saying, like, with your um, overthinking and going into the cold water, mm. obviously, I feel like just just from what I see, obviously on social media and that I see a lot more men doing it than women hmm. um, but is that actually in I'd the say same? the opposite to begin um, with wasn't it yeah look, it's probably about 50-50 split okay R- yeah. me. I think to begin with I would say the women and that were in beforehand but we, then we had PTs that were doing takeovers which were bringing mm. women in and stuff mm. like that mm. but the thing is for women as well women could not think of anything worse than ice bath every you know what I mean they love a hot bath Everyone shower. comes in hot, sh- like, scolding shower, especially in my house. Yeah. Um, could not think of anything worse, but they're always better than the men. And I always say that when yeah. they come through, it's like they can switch off a lot easier than the men to get to actually get through it. Wow. So I know it's definitely. strange. Definitely strange. I need to start giving women more respect. <laughs> <laughs> I do. It's, they, they, they just allowed them to shut off and just get through their breath work and just, just calm their head to get in as well. Mm. And it's strange yeah. because they're the Try well. I know from my partner that she couldn't think of anything worse, but they managed to crack through it more than that. It's really weird. Women have got a higher threshold of pain, haven't they? Yeah, that mm. comes down from childbirth. Yeah, yeah. It? The threshold far higher. Or tolerance. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> I know, like if I break a nail, not work for a week, and only push it. <laughs> so, yeah. so that's why you stayed off for that week. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> the, fourth, so, the lovely now though. <laughs> I was say, oh, fuck, I dropped my phone there. How, yeah, so if I was to get into, you just want to take me through step by step. If I was to start doing cold plungers and like them loomy tubs or whatever, or cold showers, mm. how would I build up? How would I be able to control my breath? How would I be able to get into that zone? Is there any ways that like he's maybe trying to tell people before they start? You're doing the right thing with cold showers to begin with. Yeah. It's always the easiest place to start. It's obviously different doing a cold shower because when you're in an ice bath, you're actually surrounded, water's touching every part of you, you yeah. know what I mean? Whereas water's bouncing off you in the shower. But there's different styles of breathing you can do. I always find uh, box breathing's always really good. So in for four, hold for four, out for four, hold for four. Mm. And it's just anything that's going to help calm your nervous system. Exactly like we were saying, there's always going to be fight or flight when you first get in. And calm your nervous system like you... You can only build yourself up to it so much, but when you get in, you're still going to get that initial shock. Mm. It's just calming yourself down, taking the time, and then sort of finding space in there. Yeah. But just increasing time and then dropping temperature. Increase time, drop temperature, and then see how long you can go for. But like I say, we're doing them five days a week. Still, I'm not doing two degrees, you know what I mean? I'm still getting a, a benefit out of six, seven degrees. It's still cold, like, you know? And there's some days that feels even worse than others. Yeah. Like, it's literally up and it can be the same temperature within two days. One day your head's not in it and you just, it feels like that was the worst three weeks of my life. Obviously, you feel better after, yeah. but it's unbearable as you get through it. <laughs> one day you can be all right. I did one after a run the other week and it was literally probably the nicest one mm. I'd done because I was so hot. But then the day after, it was... Back was to normal. Back to yeah. normal. <laughs> <laughs> same old gruelling challenge it was just, three days ago. You were saying... That you do it first thing in the morning. Try to, yeah. yeah. Do you think <laughs> if you don't if you don't do it in the morning, is it on the back of your mind all day? You got to do it, it. Yeah. If you've, it's just, I don't know. I'm like like I was saying with I'm like that with anything. If I tell myself I'm going to do something, yeah. if I haven't done it, that it plays on me. It, yeah. Like it'll play and play and play on me. But yeah, I always like to try. If I get it in, get the hardest tax boxed off. And then you can get on with your day, your day then, can't you? Yeah. Eat that frog. Uh, I was going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Strange, really, though, because I prefer doing it in the evening. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah you I do, prefer don't doing you? In the How so come? Because, you 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 sorry, but I just think, like, if I got cold, like, cold or shower in the evenings, um, I'd feel a bit more awake. I feel like I'd want to get a more of a hot therapy going, because I can wild down a little bit then. 
So you're supposed to let your body warm naturally, not mm. not a hot shower. You're supposed to pat yourself down, not not really dry yourself off as such as well. Let your body warm up naturally throughout. So I find when I'm going home, it's easier because mm. then I can go home, have my dinner, and I'm pretty much going to bed straight away. And it, and it does give you a really good night's sleep. For me, it just I think it must be the sugar and the adrenaline. Yeah. Like, the first thing you do when it hits you, like it's tiring mm. after, so it just sort of slows you right down all the way home. And I do always find I get a better night's sleep after. Don't get me wrong, if I was to have one in the morning, it is we have regulars in, yeah, first thing every day, every day. Yeah, what time six, is first thing? Six, six. <laughs> yeah, you gotta try and get in, get yours done, clean up, get everywhere open, and then let them do theirs. So Ooh. it is a graft, it is a graft, but it's worth it. But then, like you say, to me, last thing at night, I could, that's not mine. Thing at all like i couldn't i don't like it in the evening so i i just i don't know i need to talk get it up do it and then, yeah and i won't talk myself out of it <laughs> yeah rather than procrastinating through the day and then what time do you do it then well in the morning yeah about quarter to six twenty six <laughs> get in get it done <laughs> you can see who opens up and who closes can't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> does it because we were, obviously katie was meant to be here today does mm. katie do it she does. They've got one of, like they've got one of the Lumies at home, and she does it like she, she's not in there like religiously, mm. but yeah, she does do it. She, her her dad's another one who's he's yeah. another one that's got a streak. He's in there. He's in there pretty much every day. He was he had a I think I don't know if he had a knee replacement or he had a knee injury and no he, did, he stopped him from having one didn't he? and he's he's got one at home now as well and he won't he swears by it he won't miss a day without it. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the temperature that the Lumies can get to? Because one of my mates, he's got one, and you just leave it out in the back. For a you can get chillers for them as well now, mm. but the ones, they'd just be the temperature of whatever it made it. Oh, okay. Unless you're adding ice to it before you get in and stuff mm. like that, whereas the, the, we've got the pumps and chillers on ours, which clean it, and then obviously take the temperature down as well. Yeah. So if you fill it and leave it outside in January, it's going to be a lot colder. <laughs> you know what I mean? For me, that's more dedication than getting yourself to a centre to go and do it, because you just look out your back window. <laughs> what if I started doing it in like July, August? And Better off staying in your shower. <laughs> 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 but I could just be eating, so we're just getting in. Yeah, you, to be fair, it's, it's still a way to cool down, but you wouldn't be keeping it too cold. Like, <laughs> I feel like to do this to get into because I do want to do it. Like I said, I do want to do the cold therapy. I want to do it. I want to just take care of my body. Like I said before, with all me different broken bones and <laughs> ligaments and tendons and all that, whatever's going on. I do need to start doing all that's why I want to do like the stretch and the mm-hmm. mobility more, but also still like do me traditional bodybuilding training. Not to be a bodybuilder, but just yeah, to yeah. gain mass. Mm-hmm. But I feel like if I'm gonna do this to start with, I feel like I need, do need to come down to Coventry. You know? Get yourself down. <laughs> yeah, just come, down. come down. <laughs> and if I can travel that far and then get in <laughs> get in a cold um cold tub for thirty seconds, then I can come back up here and then actually try and do it properly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if I was to come down what would the day be like? Like what 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 what, what could they do? Again? So within the space, we've got like I say, you could pick up on one of our classes. Mm-hmm. Katie that you mentioned there, she initially came to us as a yoga instructor and a Pilates instructor. Oh, sorry, I should have reframed the question better. What would you make my day look like? If I came down and said, "Boys, give me the experience of one wellness." So probably starting off with the hot and cold therapy. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the for you. <laughs> starting off so people always think it should be the other way around but the science back way is starting off in the hot mm. so go for about 15 20 minutes in the infrared sauna then into the cold plunge mm-hmm. and you alternate between them for the hour so aiming for about three to four minutes in the cold 15 minutes of hot uh, after that you go through into the himalayan salt room mm-hmm. which is one of the ideas we got f- behind it to Give people a reason to so they do the hard thing and then go into a relaxation room so they're feeling better, recharge, and they can basically thaw out in there, have a hot <laughs> drink and stuff like that. And then as from there, you carry on. You could use the skin therapy rooms, classes, massage, anything you wanted to like that as well. IV drips as well. Oh my god, you really got everything. You never mentioned that. Hangover IV. center basically. <laughs> <laughs> What's Himalayan? What is it? Pink salt. Yeah, I know what the pink salt is, but I don't think there's tubs in it around the room, is there? Yeah, it's, uh, we imported bricks. We yeah. imported the bricks and we built uh, built a wall up. So there's two types of it. Ours is a passive salt room, so it's just based on relaxation. Yeah. You can have an active salt room as well, where you'd have something called a halo generator that's on the wall. 
and that would have Himalayan salt particles in it, which would blow that around the room. That's good you're for people breathing. with like, you'd be breathing yeah. with respiratory issues and stuff like that. But ours is just uh, purely a relaxation room. So Time we do out. like breath work and stuff like that in there. The thought process behind that room, it, the salt was a thing that we came of just because we absolutely loved the look of it. Yeah. But that room was just meant to be a chill out space. Again, we didn't want to be like a gym, but we wanted to have a community in the recovery space as well. So people have gone, worked hard, put themselves through it, doing ice baths and saunas, and then moved into there where they can chill out, relax, connect, and actually talk mm. to people and stuff like that. Have somewhere else is not like you do that and then you go home. Because mm. it felt like in the spaces that we went to, because like, we went all over looking at other ice bath centers and stuff like that, that you were just sort of not, and then not in a bad way to any of their places. Some of them were amazing, but it was sort of you do your ice bath and sauna, you're left alone, you go home. Yeah. Whereas time out. Yeah, a bit of time, time away, and then also to actually chat to other people as well. Yeah. I've seen it in a spa I went to where you, after you massage, you go to like a little restroom, you can read a book, you can play on your phone. I thought there's something in that. It's like you not come straight from relaxation back in the mix of things. You get yeah. even if it's 10, 15, 20 minutes, it's it, it's part of you journey for yourself especially in especially with like you said you've got one hour there you can have up to two it's time out of your week your working week to just reset and recharge and take some time for yourself for one minute yeah how often would you just recommend it because like i was saying before something i can always refer back to myself it's great <laughs> injuries how often would you say like for someone that's injured or constantly trying to recover from an injury would come in? Because it could be overkill at one point, couldn't it? Physical benefits, the the science side, if it's just the physical side of it, yeah. they say over this course of a week, you want around 57 minutes. I, I didn't choose these numbers, so I don't know why it's 57 minutes, but 57 minutes of infrared sauna yeah. and 11 minutes of cold. So you can spread that. That doesn't have to be in one sitting. That's just spread across the week. But that's just to get the minimum effects of physical benefits. You obviously can prolong it. And I would say a good a, three times a week is a good way to do it and just split it up across your week. We have a lot of people, uh, AJ, like a power lifter, mm. uh, he comes in after his heaviest day. If, yeah. it, if it's for like, because mm. he's coming literally, he's going for, I think he's going for a 400 kilogram squat. Like, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's a thousand like, across the board. Oh, my knees are just trembled. Like, honestly, <laughs> we could yeah. keep in a robe when they come in. I was like, that's not going to fit your pal, but you can have it. <laughs> <as a scarf. laughs> <laughs> but uh, he does his heaviest day and then comes in and sees us the next mm. day because he'd always be resting anyway. But yeah, that's that's the way to again. Like, he realizes when he stops and he hasn't been for yeah, a week, that's, he tendons that don't recover week. quicker, yeah, as quick as they should be. So, it's it's once you find what works for you and then. Actually, when you stop, that was benefiting me more reasons than than I thought. Yeah, because I feel like I may, and I'm not a doctor or anything like that, because I'll be a lot richer, but <laughs> I feel like I may have tendonitis or something like that because I snap, well, ruptured, scientifically, I ruptured my patella tendon, my left knee, and then my right knee's compensated so much, but I feel like yeah, there's something yeah. there. So would you say recommend like so this stuff for myself or someone that's going through something like this? 100%. Yeah, really good. Go sell yourself. Go on, keep selling it. Yeah, so um, the recovery side of it is a, it's not just inflammation. Is it? Our two main people that are in every day, so we've got Steve. I was getting my dad in there for a long time as well. It's arthritis and recovery. Arthritis, which is inflammation. Tendonitis is inflammation of, yeah. of, of your tendon. So it's good. Like In your skin, you have pain receptors. So by freezing the pain receptors, that's how you get the the um, benefits of it not uh, of from the other side of it. Mm. Um, Your ACL recovery, yeah, mine, we rocketed, didn't it? Once you, because he had his ACL yeah. done while we were building the center, yeah. he had to stop. Well, the building didn't stop, but he had to stop. Cause he had his, he had mm. to have his ACL done, and his gaff of like the guy doing his physio was saying. You can see the difference of when we opened mm. and he was in there using the ice bath because he said his uh, the uptick in his recovery mm. was just ridiculous. From once he was uh, once we were open, we had the ice bath running and he was doing them daily religiously. You could yeah. see the change in his recovery from it. So basically, my operation was probably in the worst time we could have done it. I think we were about five weeks out from getting oh. open, so I had to get straight back to work. He was like stressed out. Christmas was going on. I'm meant to be at home with my family, <laughs> <laughs> so I just had to sack the crutches off after two weeks, get back to it. But that was my story. So to take away, take down the swelling and inflammation, I was just, well, 
there's ever going to be a time to start doing ice baths, it's now. Yeah. And it really helped me. It allowed me to push on in my training, allowed me to push on my physio. And then that was my story. That was my own personal why, why I do it. Because I've seen it firsthand. And if you feel the benefits yourself, then you're going to incorporate it into your life. I mean, now I've started running again. I've got high rocks in October. Obviously, I haven't really run for the last two years because I've done my knee myself. Mm. And now again, my legs are hurting. Once you start doing, if you're training in the gym and then you start running, it's all the muscles you haven't used. Like yeah. you're in, you're in pain. Yeah, because I want to start going down like that the hybrid training, not not in the sense of like high rocks, but the hybrid. I want to start doing running because I've I've never been a runner, so I want to start doing it. Just, Everyone's yeah. at it now as well. Yeah. Now. Every, look, I just want one of them vests and a bit of sunglasses and go running. <laughs> one of them gels yeah. in you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running down the street. But I do want to do that, but I'm obviously I'm scared, probably yeah, to say yeah. the least, of like getting running because I still want to be able to build mass, but also want to do the running part of it as well, like interval training. That's but it's like, I just know, like, I have to stop playing football because my knee just couldn't do it yeah. anymore. That's like, what happened in mine. But yeah. That's the thing now, though. Everyone wants to be... You want to lift the heaviest mass you've ever lifted. You want to be able to run. You want to be one of these. And it's probably social media that's done it to all of us. You want to be the fittest, the strongest, the quickest. Yeah. Uh, be able to run the most miles. And you have the fastest personal mm-hmm. 5K you've ever done. And you want to do f- five ice baths a week and so on. As it's just where do you fit it all in and that, how do you get it? That's isn't it? <laughs> that actually is. Um, can you? <laughs> can you fit it in? Especially if you've got you like a normal job. <laughs> Yeah, we it's. Try. Do, do you find it hard sometimes? Because like, I know you say before, like sometimes you feel like you can't get your own training in. But, pardon me, do you feel like it's hard to get it in or do you just prioritise other stuff now? Uh, the training or? The training part of it for yourselves. Because uh, do you. S- my, if he's been training. I would just, that was my, my personal. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just up and down with it. I train hard. I train with my missus. Like, that's, that's what helps me. Cause, like I said, we're working all the time but you just have to find what works yeah. for you or like change your training style so whereas i used to like six days a week now i'm at three days a week you know mm. and you just do what you can when you can but it's again yeah. you just got to make it work around whatever you've got going on at that time mm. do you do you find any disadvantages when you don't train Me. Because, because obviously where people go oh they're doing the cold therapy they must be fine or if someone goes oh they train them but not doing cold therapy yeah, yeah. um they must be fine. But do you find, like, do you notice the difference when you're not doing both? You're only doing the one, maybe? I, only, I notice it in my head. In yeah. my head. Not physically. Like, I, I'm not, I've trained now. I want to look as good as possible. But mm. that's not my priority. Like, it's just making sure you're on top and you're firing. Like, I used to be, I'd be restricting calories and X, Y, Z, you know. Mm. Whereas now, I eat healthy, but I eat as much as I feel like I need to. And yeah. then I get my training in and I do my ice baths because I know, if I can do that, my head's all right, and then I can crack on and push on with whatever else and tackle any other thing that needs to be done, you know? Mm-hmm. I think I definitely, well, I do prioritise it because I know what it does for myself. Yeah. I have to. Like, I don't, I don't personally think I'd leave my personal trainer because I get too much out of it, what it gives me back to mm. from hard times, life stresses, like, by consistently doing things that, you know, I'm probably motivated to go to the gym probably. 20% of the sessions I do a week but <laughs> it's when you're there you're alright it's getting yeah. there it's the longest 30 minutes of your life waiting to get to the gym after once you're there you're alright yeah that motivation is a big thing. can be low I remember in January he said to me like we've we've got to keep plucking on at these things obviously I was doing physio at the time it's boring you can go for a bit of a plateau but there's no point running a wellness centre if you're the two most stressed out people there pouring from empty buckets everyone feels great and we're stood behind the desk getting running on about an hour's sleep eh? yeah. like, I hope you had a nice time yeah, like, great. I haven't seen our family but you've got to prioritise your own stuff to, to benefit and give back a little a little on that as well do you know what I mean mm. how so, do you just find the because I, I want to go into like business myself and all that and obviously you used to doing really well with your business but how do you find managing any, everything like and then getting stressed out and Taking time off for yourselves, make sure you do your infrared saunas, your cold therapy, your training, spend time with the missus. It, it's, it's, I, I find like it's acceptance. Like some, you've got to you've got to accept that at every time something's not going to be hundred yeah. percent. And like that's yeah, you fly with your business, you got a bit of a belly, or mm. you you fly with your business, your relationship at home might not be as good as it should be. Like you've just there's got to be 
like I've we've both got other businesses as well. So I've I've got a uh, building surveying business. Bren's got his own bi- other business as well. Um, but you just need to accept that you it can't like you. I know people like say all this mentality stuff like that. It can't be not everything can be a hundred percent at all mm. times. It's just you it's a fact. You can try it. and yeah. you will. Well, I was gonna say I was gonna swear then. Sorry. No, it's, it's uh, okay. It's fine. I was gonna say, <laughs> something will feel fucked at mm. certain times. Yeah. And you have to accept it and make amends. Like even if sometimes it will be your relationship or you ain't been and seen your parents or whatever it might be, that's just the way life is because something has to take pro- like everything can't be a priority all the time. It mm. can't. It's just physically impossible. So you're gonna let someone down or you're gonna miss something. You've just got to plan everything as best as you can. Tick off stuff as and like do as much as you can every day. And then anything that's not right, you make it right. Like mm. That's I, I, that's the way I see it anyway. It's, it's more acceptance than anything else. That you do as much as you can, as as often as you can. Yeah, I think it's also keeping an eye on the long term goal. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, it's like that the journey thing where everyone thinks the journey is like that, mm. but it's up and down. No, it's all yeah, up and down. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like you said, there's always going to be hundred percent that thing. You've got to make sure that that's our goal. Yeah, yeah. And once we get it, life's going to be easier. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, it's dropping stuff yeah. out as well. Yeah. There's like you've got your. I I know my personal three to four things that that are my main focus, and there's certain things that you want to say yes to. You haven't got the capacity yeah. for it, mm-hmm. and you either say I'll do it down the line or no, and yeah, we'll see what true. comes of it. But as long as you know You're who fine. you are and what you want, then that sh- it comes slightly easier. Like obviously. We're saying yes to certain things at the moment. Like we're building a, a new business, you know what mm. I mean? But you've just got to, like you say, be fixed on where you want to be yeah. and be open to where it takes you. Cause it's, never gonna, you're ne- it's not going to be a straight line to it. I heard something a couple of years ago that if you do not have a goal, what are you aiming for? And it's true. Yeah. If you look at it in a football field, what mm. are you? what is the point in what you're doing? Yeah. And it can be anything. It can be business. It can be the gym. It can be... That's why I always try. I have to try and set myself a target. Obviously, this is me at Irox. It's about week four, so it gives me something to get up. But where I went through a stage in my summer was on, the Euros was on, I felt like I was just a bit like oh, plodding along here. And then, boom, 12 weeks out, it gives you something to focus on and just feel a bit more energized. New new goals, new destination. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's so important to just keep pushing towards it. And as well, be mindful. Like we've, we've had events, for example, that we've put so much into when you get to there and you've completed these things like take a minute to yeah. appreciate what we've done we had our we're opening day for that, we? we had our open day that we've been working on for nearly a year and then after we're like sound see you tomorrow and we're like oh actually what look what we've just done we've just yeah, had yeah. 150 people through the door on the first weekend and we're like that was unreal we've literally put our lives into it and we were just <laughs> like sound mate see you tomorrow like it was just normal but you've got to because there's always a ceiling there's always something you're going to be aiming for but I feel like you just have to take the time and that's yeah. it's appreciating it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. that's where Katie like that's but like you were saying was meant to be here today she's good for that isn't she good yeah. for both of us like me and him will be like right next what's next what's next what mm. are we doing where are we going how can this work and Katie will say like she'll be all for it but she'll also be the like calming voice that's like well just appreciate what you've done yesterday mm-hmm. before you worry about what you're doing tomorrow like you know as, you, as you're talking there actually just had an image at the um... Everest in my head where like your goal is to reach the summit but you've got a base camp here mm-hmm. haven't you and that's what yeah. you've got you've yeah, got to yeah. go like like with you with the podcast like you look, you don't look back but if you look back and went we've we'll reached that goal now yeah yeah pass, pass ourselves on the back here we've we'll reached that now it's the next yeah. one mm. that's aim for the next yeah, one yeah, next yeah. one yeah. Cause then, and you see with athletes don't need that if you just have one goal and do you get the gold medal do you go what do we do with my life now yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah, 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 yeah yeah, it's just like you say you've got to, you have got to pat yourself on the back. Yeah, of course. Go well done. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Do you think that's just a man thing then? Because I feel like from what you two were saying there, like you've got to the first open weekend, and you're yeah, actually like another bit. Like I get like that with the podcast. I'm always looking to the next step. Yeah, what's yeah, next? Yeah. What's next? What can I look for? Do you think because we're so focus driven, and as men we always just want to improve, we want to improve, want to improve, that we do just struggle to just. Look appreciate around. yeah appreciate mm. and just take that minute and look around what, what have we just built here definitely definitely yeah. same with anything isn't it you just it's not till when like you say when you look a lot further back like it's even even like i don't know i'd ever struggle to say like 
I'm proud of myself for that. Mm. Don't matter what it is. It's, I don't know, it's a strange thing, isn't it? It's always like, you need to do more. What's mm. the, not, not even the new thing, just what's the next thing? How can this be better? Which is a good thing to have, but it's definitely, you need to take some time. And Are we all in a sort of mind frame to prove? Proving to yourself, proving to other people, is that something that plays into it as well? Do you know what I mean? Definitely. Yeah, it you know probably, what I mean? probably is. Yeah. Whether it's not coming from an ego way, but to prove to, to prove to yourself. You know yourself by setting up your own business. It's, mm. You've either got the opportunity to have a normal job or you're stuck in that between success and failure, right now. Yeah. Regardless of how hard it is, but you're constantly proving to yourself you want to get to that so yeah, and I feel like what what I'm bad for, and I don't know if anyone else would like with yourselves or people that watch and listen to this, is what you were saying about like that success and failure. I always feel like I'm just like in the middle. <laughs> like I'm always just trying to get closer to success, but as soon as I reach something there, it just like success wants us to go that bit further away. It's like a carrot on a string. We, it's just always bringing me it, that way. We had one of our probably our best weekend a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? Yeah, he yeah. was luckily enough to do an event for Red Bull at Silverstone. Right. And I was at um a big high rocks gym based near Coventry. Like live events is what it's about. You're meeting new people, you're connecting with people. The week after, I was lucky and the booking system was slowest it's probably been at the start of the kids' holidays. So we're like, mm. we've just had our best weekend we've ever had on the business and then we're looking at each other. Yeah. What is going on here? But you just, <laughs> it's not straightforward. It's not the takeoff that you're yeah. expecting it to be from that. It's just, it humbles you, I guess. Don't yeah, how do you but deal you... with that? Because obviously if, People going to business, they're probably going to expect that it's going to blow up when it's going to go up. But say, mm. for instance, they open up first month, absolutely blows. It's it's amazing. They've got everything that they wanted. It's going, they're going, yeah, it's going to be the best thing ever. But then it slows right down. We, yes. We're good at doing it for each other. Like we, like I said, we'll both be like, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? But like, we both stress as well. And mm. it's we're, it seems to have been lucky that when one of us is like that, the other one's feeling all right. So mm. he'll ring me going mad. And I said, relax. No, I do I say it sounds. <laughs> in that then two, day, two yeah. days later, I could ring him saying, we need to do this. We need da, 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 da. And he'll say, look, it'll be sorted. But then the other side of that, you might have a slow day. Some new, a new customer comes through the door you haven't seen before. You give them the experience and then they're leaving. You see their face. They thank, like, you see what it does for them. And when they're leaving and you think, yeah, that's, that's the feeling that you want mm. from it. Like, aside from money and stuff like that. That's what you want. The feeling that you see on people's faces, like, and the benefit you see them getting from it, it that's when, like, it just makes it easier mm. to take the rough days, if you know what I mean. It might yeah. only be, like, one, two customers, but that makes up yeah. for a rough day or whatever. It's the most yeah. rewarding thing I've ever done as a job. Yeah. Really? Hands down. Mm. Yeah. But setting it up before, obviously, you set things up because it's a good business idea and loved it. Like I said, although I was pretty poor at the ice bath the first time I tried it, we thought, this is a great idea. But it's way... So it was more hands-on where you're coaching people through it. Not everyone wants you there. Some people just like their space to themselves, but you see a lot more in, well, people's increased time when you're actually there. It's like if you go to the gym. Mm. We go to the gym and we're doing your heaviest day. You're going to lift more because I'm there at support. You yeah. feel safe. You feel more of a safety blanket. Whether I'm just talking nonsense in your ear for three minutes and it pushes <laughs> you through it, but it's in, you get in your head. If I go to the gym with him, I'm going to lift more than I could because you feel safer and you're more comfortable with doing it with people. Well, it's pushing yourself so, a little bit more yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When you're pushing people's mental resilience, whether it be a pro athlete, I mean, you know, yourself, it could be one kick, one goal, one try. Mm. But it's, it's the fine margins at the top, mm. whether it's going to be someone that's suffering a little, you wouldn't even know. You, we have people get out and they talk about all sorts yeah. after and you're like, it's just, let their guard down. They feel mm. buzzed. They feel they've had their dopamine rush from the cold water and they want to talk to you about all sorts of stuff. <laughs> yeah, the like, face, which is amazing. The, the injuries they've faces. got. The back injury's gone. You're just like, you're given and you don't really understand it. That's why Katie's really good at it for us because she just, we're all given so much and you don't really, until you hear it from someone. Yeah. It's just your job. You get up, you enjoy it. Mm. So it is way more rewarding than, than I thought it ever would be. Yeah. Which is good. Do you find that people do you leave a lot more happier though? Like obviously you'll get like 100%. 100%. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Even like he, you'd had it a couple of times. I, I met like two lads come in and they were like moody. Hard work. Like hard, <laughs> like hard work. You, know, you just meet people and they're like great. And he rang me straight after and he's like, these two lads just come in and he was 
like I won't obviously I'm not going to say who, what it was but like <laughs> he said they wouldn't say a word like they were just miserable just like thought they were it sort of thing got in, did the ice bath and saunas where he talked them through loved it he was like they stayed for half hour after they wouldn't shut up I couldn't like, stop talking his head off. humble <laughs> boy cold water I could not stop asking about the benefits how many times I thought he was actually alright <laughs> and it's just they get the bad their dopamine rush it's all that some people need sometimes and that, yeah. it's, 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 it's just the buzz of doing yeah. it like, especially it's when Someone that doesn't think they're going to be able to do it. Do you know, someone mm. that's been brought along, yeah. or like someone, a wife that brings a husband, or husband that brings a wife, and they don't think they do it. Watching someone do something they didn't believe they could do, mm. and then seeing how buzzing they are from it, there's nothing else like it. The first on our opening weekend, I, 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 the first one that ever happened with was my little cousin Liv, mm. and I got her to do five minutes. She couldn't think of anything worse, and I thought, "Whoa!" I've just pushed her out of her comfort zone for five minutes, and I thought. I love it. Mm. Two of my other mates, they didn't want to be in there. I made them bet over a free grenade bar who'd go in there longest. <laughs> I thought, so that room's got competition. This one's people shutting off. So you're pushing people in all kinds of different areas of life. One could be the competitive state. One can be the pushing something to do they really didn't want to do. Mm. Because it's, what you just saying, like it sounds amazing. Like it really is. Like I'm so happy for you. So like what you've been doing. Thank you. What, what do you think makes you different? Because you should, you should given like a vibe where you are offering something and like I may be just chatting shit to you, but I don't know many. But from what you are saying and the way that you're going on, like you've got a competition room, got a shut off room, we've got people coming in who are moody and all of a sudden they're my best mates. <laughs> it's like I said, what do you think it is that makes you different? You like you have got like that something in there. It's hard to say. Like the building itself, like we have gone up market and we have spent a lot of money, like and I've like mm. the building bigger and stuff like that. But I don't, I genuinely don't think it's just the way the place looks. So like we've been lucky with the people that have joined the team since we've opened as well. Like mm, I mentioned, really Katie, lucky. but like Jolie, Libby, Bexy, Ellie, like everyone that's part of the team, they've we've been selected with who we've chosen, and everyone that's joined us has been nat- like naturally joined the team. No mm. one, nobody's come and like applied for a job and then got a job. Like Ellie, that's doing our Pilates classes now and our bar classes she came for an ice bath with her fella and she just said can I have a look around just got chatting turned out she'd just completed her Pilates mm. uh, a friend taught it but like then she she joined us and it's just it's literally that's the one in one wellness like it's one's personal wellness but if we've always said if you go in one room you'll feel better yeah. it doesn't matter and I think it's the feeling that people get when they come in the way they looked after and just the whole experience mm. that's what we we keep striving for that, don't we? Mm. Sad. So, one of the things that you said when you booked on was that you wanted to cover was, let me read that off word for word, our men's monthly workshop, and it's based on getting men to feel and perform their best. How did the idea come about with that one? Uh, it was something I'd always wanted to do personally, because I felt like, listen, I haven't got the answers for how, like, for what to do and how to do it. Mm. But I knew it was something I felt that it was needed. Like a lot of the stuff I follow online is like mental health stuff, and like um, I just feel like none of it really spoke to me as like a young working class lad, if you know what I mean. But I know that, like I was saying, like we'd both been to the same therapist, and I know the amount of lads, and it all just seemed like it wasn't quite how I felt about what's good for blokes and how like we could feel better. So I wanted to set something up where it's just a day for lads to come together. We do a bit of a workout. We get someone who has got more answers than I could ever have in. So we've had like breath work people and different bits and pieces like that. And just to come come mm. together, feel better about yourself. If you want to talk, you can talk. Mm. Or if you, But you know there's a group of people there mm. that if you ever do need to talk, that they're there. You know yeah. what I mean? I just find when you see online everything seems either like alienated. yeah alienated like hippie-ish or like mm. you have to do this you can't drink xyz like i like a beer like i like doing xyz but i know what makes me feel good and that's training eating well and doing stuff i enjoy so i wanted to create a day and it's just done really well because there's a lot of lads that are in the same position that they have their struggles and they want to feel better about themselves mm. yeah so men's monthly was designed really on so there's there's like three areas, aren't there? If you're on top, you're somewhere in the middle and you could be struggling a little bit. Yeah. It could be stresses of anything, jobs, life, money, wherever it is, family stuff. It happens to everyone. But it's how 
do the ones at the top or in the middle and the bottom progress it's looking after yourself feeling better getting together it doesn't have to be jumping in an ice bath it can be a get together it can be you can get more out of a talk with friends than mm. being surrounded by like-minded people so the idea actually come from i'll give it him <laughs> yeah, i'll give it him i'm look, looking forward to saying this so we had a breathwork specialist coming in and we were getting events and we're obviously coming together with our marketing and stuff and he said i want to do something for men i said you're mental I was like, let's just put it out there. Let's just do it for everyone. He said, no, let's do something targeted for memory. I pushed back on this for about two days. And he said, I said, it's going off next week. Let's just do it. Let's throw it out. And he said, I said, you know what? Do what you got to do. Sold, like one of our busiest events straight away sold out. People look like, because it was like, he said, there's something missing in Coventry with this. And I said, well, it could be too much. And the first one was really powerful. Mm. People stayed around for like an hour after yeah. all sorts of walks of life, aspects, ages, talking and connecting with people that, I think the guy Dan, um, Dan actually broke, yeah. broke down the barrier and said why he did it, and it made people feel comfortable in the room. Mm. Um, I wasn't actually in the room at that time, no. but I think he we had lads down. from literally a mate of your mate Joe brought his little stepbrother who was seventeen at the time, and then we had all the way up to like lads in their sixties. Yeah, and there's oh, obviously I won't say what people yeah. were saying because it's their own stories, but like. People yeah. that have said beforehand, like, I'm not speaking and stuff like that. By the time we were in there, literally for an hour and a half oh, after the event finished, everyone was just sat around, just chatting. Some about personal life, some just having a laugh, do you know what I mean? But I just think there's everybody struggles at different times and with different things. And it's so easy to just not do anything about it. Mm. And I know it's like it's okay not to be okay and all that sort of thing, but that I, I thought something specifically targeted for men mm. would just, especially men, which I see like like myself, just like mm. working class lads, you know what I mean? That are just they know what they need to do, but they don't know well, sometimes they don't know Definitely. what to do. Like sometimes I don't know what to do, but you just if we can try and get specialists in their own field to come in, all while we're having a laugh and doing it, we might learn something along the way. Mm. Second one was more of just like a get together, right? Yeah, like a workout, really... cold water swim, we had food, mm. um, some really nice food but on it. It was just a feel good day. Yeah. To, again, time out from people's lives, like You've got a job. You've got what. You've got all this stuff in the week that you could probably think of a million different things by the Saturday morning to get up and go and do this bit of a feel good morning. When you go and do it, everyone stays around for hours after talking and communicating and connecting because it's not sat in a pub. Yeah, it's not. Going I'm like literally probably stuff. half the lads there. Have, or the last long conversation I had with them. Which would have been about nonsense. Would have been in a pub. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. it would have. That's so just, just the way yeah. it is. Like normalizing like, being being where you are and, and doing and something that makes you feel good do you know what I mean like mm. a lot more benefits are going to come from that than sitting around someone said it to me after it and it was like the saying boys will be boys and it's usually when a lad's done something and he's being a prick Yeah, but it's not yeah. that day is boys will be boys we had a fucking tug of war at the end of it do you know what I mean like, <laughs> yeah. it sounds you know, like, mad we were all taking a piss having a laugh and stuff like that mm. stuff, you know? it's just, we're just being like that immature child aren't yeah, we just yeah, letting yeah. it out as adults and 100%. just letting it oh. I love enjoying that, you know. yourself part of yeah. it is having fun of, fun with the journey as well right mm. yeah because mm, I remember there was a lad that came on here just a good few episodes ago Speed on man his name, real name's Elliot and they've got a thing called Kurt's Coffee Club of a friend that passed away and they got named the coffee club after him but he said there must have been about 30 of them all fellas all went away in this retreat and he stayed in this place where it was like chalets and bunk beds and it was like 3 o'clock in the morning and they were all eating food watching the UFC in this big room with a projector on and when Lass. the UFC finished, like six, he went to the sports hall next door and all started playing dodgeball. Yeah. Well, but it's like he said it was one of the best things they've ever done because mm. they got to just do whatever they wanted, be with the lads, mm. all there for the same cause and just be happy. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. just have a laugh. And that's another mm. thing that you've done there. That's what we were aiming for. Definitely. Yeah. It seems to be, well, it's taken off quite well. And uh, we've got a few other big things planned as well. So well, hopefully it'll keep getting bigger and better and... The plan with the next one, I haven't put any tickets or anything like that out. I'm still planning it, but I'm going to try and do it so that people 18 and over pay for the pay for tickets, and anyone between like 13 and 18 come for free mm. because the young lads. Like it's called men's monthly, but they're gonna they're the next men, aren't they? Yeah. Like, yeah. and how long did it take before we've we're both like he's not 30 yet, but he's nearly 30. Like. Um, <sighs> we both said oh, I was in therapy with him oh, I was in therapy with him If you, I just think if you can get younger lads that are going to be blokes in a few years and build show them resilience. yeah building yeah. it up and just and even showing them that like you Almost. will have shit go on yeah 
but this is how you can deal with it. It's not going and doing whatever you're doing at the weekend, you know, like which we've all done it, but there's other ways to deal with it. And if we can help them before they got to like, what's it called? Get, get the lesson without the scar. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's basically what you're saying is, um, Prevention's better than a cure. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get them there. Make them understand that you are mm. going to come across these struggles. All these little things that you're going to come across may avalanche into a mm. big thing yeah, one day. But definitely. understand that coming out with all of us and we're just men. We're fine. We are. But if we've got shit that we need to deal with, we'll deal with it. Yeah, yeah. Think. Deal with it in I, a healthy way. I yeah. took my two little cousins on the last one. I think one of them is eighteen, and one of them's probably sixteen now. Just to get them involved they're probably thinking what are you get me out of bed for at six o'clock in the morning it's my weekend but it's life you know what I mean? you're gonna go yeah. doesn't like, like i mentioned earlier you don't have to be on top or or at the bottom to be to be coming to these things it's just yeah. for everyone mm-hmm. one of just my to... favorite photos of the place is the first one that you took the photo from the back of the room and it's just literally it's a bunch of blokes but it's like tattoos on people's heads like bald heads like you know if you t- <laughs> if you sent that picture and said what do you think they're there for Nobody would say, "Oh, they're there to do breath work." Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? Because it's that, it, that's the sort of bloke that we've got there, and it's just I, I absolutely love that photo. Jack and then you are all now putting down and killing like a stereotype of men. To like, if you're saying like tattoos on heads and all that, like first thing I thought of when you asked me, I thought you actually going to ask me. I go, "Is that like a prison shot or something?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like fellas, like head tattoos, face tattoos, yeah, yeah. whatever, big baldy fellas. Like, oh, that's probably a prison hall or whatever, but you said, no, they're there for breath work. Yeah, so you said, in a sense, you're actually killing a bit of a stigma about like, yeah. how men look and they're not perceived as this type of person. Yeah. They're the type of person that wants to be better and they want to feel like a feel-good factor, not uh, come in and be yeah. grunty and it's all not, that. It's not something that you've, like, intentially gone out to do. No, it's no, not natural. at all. It's just, yeah, it's just naturally it's happened and yeah. changing the narrative of it, whereas it come from a small idea, like I said, and then it's just like, well, actually, everyone's here for something it doesn't mm. have to be too deep it can just be generally trying to stay at a nice place well even being happy where they are but how do they maintain that yeah even saying, with all the curveballs that you get thrown mm. as we used to saying about like men's mental health mental health and getting that monthly workshop making sure everyone's okay doing the prevention rather than a cure and that have you ever struggled with yourselves yeah right I've- yeah I get yeah, I suffer I suffer with anxiety. Yeah. But it's just how you learn about it. I think we were t- talking off air earlier and it's it can be such a big umbrella. Mm. It's how you combat that. Is it exercise? Is it what did you say to me earlier? Um, help so, mental uh, it's phys- help. If um mental health needs physical support. Yeah. Someone it's said it to me years ago yeah, and that. it's uh, it's the best saying I've heard because yeah. Like and it doesn't mean you have to be smashing the gym or training for high rocks, but like I've, that's one thing I've all, that's always stuck with me. Mental health needs physical support, and that might be a walk. It might be couch to five k, or it might be when you're at the fitter mm. end and you go in for mm. your, like whatever it is. But if you can set a benchmark for where you are and try and get slightly better, whatever that metric is, I, it just rolls over into a part of your life. I think when you're feeling really down, if you can do something that you thought you couldn't do, even if it's you put two point five kg on your bench press. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just something small. Like it's something small, but it shows you, and I think you know it internally. I've just got a bit better, mm-hmm. or 100%. yeah, I've got a bit stronger. I've got a bit quicker. Whatever it is, but the mental, the mental health needs physical support. That always stayed with me, mm-hmm. even from awesome. what I was just saying then. So I'm probably the most, well, definitely the most anxious out of the pair. But I was the one saying, "No, don't put Men's Day on. You're mad." Mm-hmm. Well, he was up. He was he was looking to do it. Do you know what I mean? What's the what's that about? <laughs> I'm the one saying, absolutely not, no chance. Why though? Why would you say? I that? don't know. It's just what you're programmed to think really ain't it I don't <laughs> yeah. know I'm not too sure that's why I couldn't get my head around it until it took me to sit back and think why did I say no to that mm. normalise it but I don't yeah. know I've never spoke about it yeah. <laughs> mad so I did say you're mad and he is mad to be fair he is mad just like that <laughs> but it worked yeah I think as, is, you, as you said there though and I like that that is good that mental health needs physical support that's superb that. but as a species as an animal we're not designed to sit around, are no, we? No, no, no. no. We're designed to get up and go about and no. move. Well, that was the, that's the, like that's the only like like I say I haven't got the answers. I'll put the day on and put like and, and arrange it, but I haven't got the answers for everyone. I just know that for me to feel better, it's movement, exercise, yeah, being Food. around the lads, which nine times out of ten would have used to been in the pub, yeah. which I know keep doing that long term, it's going to go bad. 
Carry on. Um, and then the uh, cold water for myself as well. Mm. Yeah. Well, so do you reckon they're like your your fundamentals then? And like, do you have fundamentals in your life where you like they're just I have to have these? So eating good, movement, seeing certain types of people. Nah. Yours is definitely diet and training, isn't it? Half to. <laughs> what, what what does your diet look like? I, I always love asking diet... people this question. <laughs> Rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> my diet's clean to be fair I'm pretty I just eat the same food you know, all the time. Por- porridge in the morning might mess around with my breakfast chicken rice or make it nicer at home mm. I'm the chef in my house I'm the chef <laughs> 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 um, I'd be the other side like, so the food food would be it but it would be going out for food with my missus yeah, like, yeah. that's that's like, or just spending time like do you know what I mean like just doing yeah. stuff like Family that that's life. just something that you need that mm. you remind you of what you're doing it all for as well, don't it? Yeah, because one because one of my mates, Cal, I've uh, been there um, going up with quite a lot lately. Been talking to him. What I really liked about his coming, he's a personal trainer, and JD's been doing training for, for years and years. And he's like, I'm probably about eighteen percent body fat now, but like I'm at a point. He's thirty three. He's like, I don't really care. And I was like, if I want to go for an ice cream, my daughter, I'm gonna go for an ice cream. Yeah, yeah. yeah if you get off, I want to go for food. I'm gonna go for food. And mm. I was like, because you're making memories over yeah. than aesthetic look. Yeah, hundred percent. I feel like a lot of people have been lost in them ways as well. It's like, for instance, who we were talking about before, it's like a lot of people want to aspire to be like him, like with the kettlebell workouts and that. I don't want to name drop in case they get offended. <laughs> but it's like a lot of people want to aspire to be like him. Yeah, but he is so on the ball and he knows what works for him, what yeah. makes him happy in his routine. Yeah. But loads of people just sacrifice probably things that make them happy just to try and have that aesthetic look. Yeah, definitely. You His can't... work rate is unbelievable, though. It's, there's, yeah. there's diff- but there's people doing that, that the wrong way. People are aspire to be someone who, where you can see what work he's putting in, whereas mm-hmm. other people aren't quite putting in that work, but they're it's juicing or whatever, you know? Yeah. Whereas, like, and I completely get what you're saying. I've got a three-year-old as well. How can you yeah. yeah, not? You know, I mean, she loves sweets. Do we try it? Do we keep Does she love sweets or do you love sweets? <laughs> no, nah, we keep her as sweets. We're dead good of her, to be honest. But like you said, that oil ice cream down the park, you're not going to say no to her. She's not going to care if you've got mm. a six-pack or four-pack. or. Yeah. But you've got to put the hard work in around it. That's what I would Yeah, say. you do. It's, it's you balance. It's, yeah, it's, it's all balance, isn't it? It's no one to how much like respect yourself, but also no one how much love to give out and like still making their mm-hmm. memories. Mm-hmm. And that. It's like, it's like, I'd love to have a sick rock, but... I love it. Like last night, we were here and we had a chippy where well, we went to the restaurant in town and brought it back home. It was great. The Chinese. The night before, me and my missus went home after being here and we went and got chips and curry and made chip, curry chip butties I'm for starving. dinner. I'm starving. I'm going to straight calories a minute. Yeah. It's, wow, just, this place. it's just like their moments, isn't it? Like, I had yeah. the food last night, so I'm not going to have breakfast this morning. Not to like punish myself mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, just like, yeah, yeah. let me stomach just shut. I'm not going to eat as much today, but I'm still going to go to the gym. And it's like, if I get a six pack one day, I get a six pack one day. If I don't get a six pack, then I don't get a six pack. Yeah. But uh, you get your six pack, you've got to maintain your six pack, haven't you? Mm. That's, that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, why yeah, I've never yeah, had yeah, one. That's <laughs> it. But as you were saying, <laughs> <there, laughs> uh, you saying there about kids, three year olds, before you know it, that three year old's 10. Mm-hmm. And you go, yeah. I remember he's 27. I remember like thinking, how has he got to that age? Because mm. yeah. it goes like that. And like I said, if you don't put that time in mm. to make them yeah. memories, because you always say about memories. Three-year-old go. Oh yeah, my dad was always in the gym working. Yeah, mm. well, yeah. I do like it though, because she is completely buying into what I'm doing. She says my daddy do exercise. Like <laughs> 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 well, you sat there on the couch eating the streets. Like <laughs> <laughs> she said, it makes me feel good. I'm walking around the house thinking, yes. She you knows. Got, uh, she's really sure up. you walk past the mirror twice. <laughs> <laughs> she knows. Checking myself out yeah. in front of a three-year-old. To be fair, he's got. He's got. Um, so on a Tuesday afternoon now, her. Uh, Jersey's nursery come in the whole nursery come yeah. in and do yoga with Katie yeah. Yeah. it's unreal Kate, like, Katie's actually got them doing yoga and, so, and they're only free the they're nerd. all off their heads but <laughs> yeah. he was like what do you mean there's going to be kids and I'm like it's for everyone like it's Jersey's nursery like it's going to be fine and, but they love it it's just again well, I wasn't doing yoga at three years old mm. definitely not they teach them breathing with a, like a Katie teaches them breathing with a breath ball and you get a practice at home to what she, she teaches her dolls that she's the yoga teacher. Yeah. So it's just like, we weren't doing mindfulness and breathing at that age. So it's good to get them into it now. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Do you reckon that you have got the potential? And I want you to be as open-minded, but also give yourself the credit for what you've done so far. But do you reckon you have got the potential to change the upcoming generation in Coventry? Even if you just stay in Coventry? 
like that. Do you reckon you've got the potential to have a real big impact with the work that you do? It's like getting three year olds to do yoga. Mm. I've never heard someone say that sentence in my life. <laughs> okay, he's looking from that. It that starts just, with yeah. mum and baby. Yeah, so yeah, mum yeah. and baby's from eight weeks old. So between us, what we're actually creating is from, I think even before that, she she teaches pregnancy yoga. So it's before yeah. a baby's here, into mum and baby, into toddlers. So yeah. Katie's mm. literally, part of the with journey. what Katie's yeah. doing, she's literally yeah. changed yeah. people's lives like with doing pregnancy yoga, like pregnant woman that had moved to Cov. She was there the other week and she said she didn't know anyone when she moved to Cov. She met a group of friends and now she had a baby. Her baby's got friends. Mm. She's got mm. friends and it's literally changed her life. And with your question about if we could check, you never yeah. know, do you? Everything yeah. changes. You don't know, look yeah, at what's happening with riots and stuff like that at the minute. Yeah. Like, no matter what we do, there's, shit's going to change. If you can try and make everyone you interact with feel better and, I don't know, show people there is other ways of thinking, not saying that we're always right, far from it, but mm. I don't know, thinking about, even thinking about changing Coventry or something like that, it's not, it's not yeah. the way I personally no. think about it, but if I can be good for every person you bump into, Mm. You can't yeah, really do much more than that, can you? I think yeah. when, when you look at like to China, when the kids go into school, nursery, whatever they, they go in, first thing they're taught is physical exercise, isn't mm. it? Whether yeah, it be yeah. all standing up or whatever else. And you see little podcasts up and where there's 20 kids all with basketballs, and they're amazing. Yeah. But they're exercising constantly, whereas to fit the curriculum in our schools, they got rid of like some PE. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. No, does yeah. Weren't there like, like a study out or, or not a study? From where I think it was like nineteen eighties, where the president of the USA said, like, how many press ups a man should be able to do, or how fast they should yeah, run. Yeah. School yeah. age, school age, school, man. Like, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. Like, that was, was like a criteria um, at that age of where they should be in their fitness journey. And now they're like, aren't they like seventy percent of the weight in America? Yeah, <laughs> which is which is completely different. But I, I don't see the difference in that. This is what a male at this age should be able to do. A criteria. Mm. What's wrong with that? Because it's, it's coming out more and more now, and it's that muscle strength staves off old age. Yeah, yeah, it? yeah, yeah. It's your bone density. Yeah, and everything like that to keep you mobile. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Because what is it? Over the age of 65, if you fall and break your hip, you've got like some of 30% chance of being dead in a year. Yeah. But most people fall over the age of 65 because of lack of balance, which is muscle. Yeah. And it's amazing the lack of muscle yeah. that does it, impact mm. on people. The resist- yeah. it's the resistance yeah. training, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, you know, keeps your bone uh, keeps your bone density because that's always going to waste as you get older. But if you've been doing resistance training, you keep more of it. Yeah, that's one thing I don't understand. Why? Why is to? Why don't people just do it? Like I don't understand why people can't just do resistance training or find some type of trainer and the like that. Everyone just does it. Like I know not everything is for everyone, mm. but. It's a, it is a just a fundamental that it should be implemented to everyone. Like it should be some type of training. I think it's probably similar to what uh, he was just saying there. It's like not everything's for everyone. Yeah. So the lads say when you go to school, like, I was good at football. So that was sound. We were playing football at school. Do you know what I mean? But mm. if there's more options for people to find out what they're good at, then people are going to stick at it more. Mm. If you go to school, like I'm quite lucky. I was like probably just slightly above average at most things. You know yeah. what I mean? So you get away, you know what I mean? But some people would go and they wouldn't do that, but you wouldn't, there's a hundred other things that they would never try that mm-hmm. they could be brilliant at yeah. and they would have stuck to that. But it's just, it's finding what it is. And then by the time, that time, what well, you're 16, 17, 18, you've got other life commitments, stuff gets in the way and then mm. it's harder, isn't it? It's like people with their driving and stuff like that. The longer you leave it, the harder it is to get into yeah. it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. To, to get uh, past your driving. That's why, that's why I always see it. So if, Getting someone in to find an exercise when they've had ninety percent of their life without it is always going to be a struggle. Yeah, hundred percent. I think I'm gonna to have to try and find a way to get people involved, especially when we become a personal trainer. Mm. It's like I don't know. It, it just really ages me when I like mm. I don't see people, especially like people who are like in the younger ages, and they've still got a lot of time to get it all that in. It's like why are you just because people don't couch? assume something bad could happen because of it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like sitting on sitting on the sofa eating mm. crap. Like mm. you don't think, like you don't think about the long term of that, do you? Yeah. But um, they, it will, it can creep up. Definitely, they're like the most, the, 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 like I said, mentioned earlier, the path of least resistance. Yeah. Mm. The hardest thing you to go to go and do in the day would be the gym, and the easiest ones go home, watch Netflix, and certainly so far. Yeah. One's gonna make you feel like shit, and the other one's gonna make you feel better. But it's just, why is it always the furthest path away from you is is the one that is gonna benefit you? Mm. It's true. 
Gyms can be intimidating, like I mentioned. Yeah, I, I understand that's, that. I do get that's that. why the power, like people would go in there <laughs> and be intimidated by it, but that's why the power of community is important. Mm. People feel like they're in it, but then people that are not, they feel like, oh, they don't know each other. It's took that person exactly the same amount of mental capacity to get in there at some point as it has for you. Mm. But it just people feel like they'd rather not do it. We're, we are a tribal animal, aren't we? That's yeah, everything. We, yeah, like you said, if you can get a connection with people, like we said, we talked before, then you use reds or blues. For me, there's a connection there. Yeah. Because yeah. you're talking about football. Like you said, people need them. A lot of people, like you photographed before, with like fellas with tattoos on their head. You walk in, you said, it's like a prison picture. Yeah. But you go, oh, actually, no, it's a cracking fella. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And that's it. It breaks down your body, and all of a sudden, you you feel more comfortable. As yeah. you say, go in the gym, meatheads everywhere, and you think, yeah, no, I'm going to walk yeah, yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah. That's why, right, from even when we didn't go for gym stuff at, at the centre, I wanted to it change my life, my first and foremost. That mm-hmm. might sound deep, but by me being able to allow me to lock in on my fitness, stick to a plan, teaches me discipline. If I'm eating clean all week, I'm not going to have that beer on a Thursday, I'm not going to do it on a Friday. It cuts out a lot of headaches for mm-hmm. me. But it made me feel like I enjoyed something. It gave me drive. Whereas eat from... There. Now, although we haven't got a gym, that's why we are doing some more classes. We are doing, whether it be the Pilates, whether it be some kettlebell sessions, people can come, work out, build muscle, have fun, mm. and it's not too serious. That's that's your gym community without having all the squat yeah. racks and, and the dumbbells and the benches everywhere. But because people are still doing the same thing, it's just relative to where it's they're It's changing at. that barrier that people yeah. have in place for the gym, isn't it? People enjoy it. 100%. Mm-hmm. So, that's where we're at. Yeah, it's. I don't know, I'm still on the wavelength of getting people into the gym. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, I agree just, with just you. I'm fussy. Yeah. We've we've yeah. got that, but oh, yeah. we've got that. But then there's I still like there's still that thing in me, whether or not, like whatever whatever it is, going in the gym and just smashing out a heavy workout is always always makes you feel better. Like, yeah. what always makes me personally feel better. Like that, and I, there's, and there will never not be a place for that for me. No, no I'm, I'm completely agreed with you. But yeah, it is people's mindset, and it people. Some people don't want to change. People are happy. People are happy where they are. Yeah. There's days where we're in there, and I'm. He's like, do you want to? I do like one thing. I do like to do is get up in the morning and go training. Yeah. That's what I like to do. But then. When the day goes on, longer and longer, excuses can crop in left. I said, mm. I've got to do this. I haven't had it yet. And we go, let's go. I'm like, oh, God. And we get there. I'm like, loved it. Didn't want to go. They're <laughs> the best ones because you're, no one ever regrets a workout, right? Yeah. That's so true. Unless you get no. injured. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever regrets it. It's just the thought of it. And sometimes yeah. I get that. So it reminds me, okay, what do I do when I feel like that? I go to about three different gyms. Just because it keeps it fresh for me. Yeah. I go with someone that I'm going to enjoy, whether it be bring a social aspect, whether you're training at 80% or 70% per day, you've still done it. You've still ticked it off. You've been with someone that you enjoy their company. At. It's a social aspect. Mm-hmm. That might sound mad to some people, but it is. Yeah, <laughs> you're out and about. You're not sat at home. You're out in the mix of things, benefiting yourselves together. Yeah, I, I totally agree with the social aspect. Yeah. yeah. Like when you play football when you were younger, people go, oh, about the football, but no, it's like it's life skills you're learning. Mm-hmm. Not everything goes your way. You lose in life, yeah. and it, it's amazing. But it's also team building and interacting. Like you mm. say, going to the gym and all that, and especially in classes. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. it is a connection for people in it. That yeah. someone yeah. was saying that what were you talking, what were you talking about uh, learning to lose. Learning to lose is like yeah. a massive part of it, which yeah. like goes up even much further. You don't even realize at the time, like how you, how you handle yourself and everything, and how the feet and how you deal with the feelings and stuff like that. From playing, that was from playing football for myself. Yeah. But, but that, yeah. that then goes into business. Yeah, hundred percent. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. It just goes yeah. across. It's it means a lot more, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. How you pick yourself up when it doesn't go as well as it should do? It's, it's from. I mean, it's not just sport. It's business. Yeah. yeah. No one's business is straightforward and straight from the off. Obviously, some very lucky people, but you are going to have curveballs. I'm going to say, I want to try and teach people, and hopefully it could be through this, or it could be through my personal training, or it could be mm. when I go to do stuff. I need to learn it first, of course, but learning to lose, learning when things don't go right, learning how to cope with it, the anxieties that come with it. You can take that on, by the way. <laughs> you, uh, yeah, that. It's... <laughs> It is teaching them whole things, isn't it, of not losing, but then also 
the comfort part, you don't always have to be comfortable. You can get up and go for a workout in the morning or you can go and jump in a nice bath, whether that's two degrees or 17 degrees, whatever way that you want to look at it. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Dan, the lad Dan Edwards that we had in for our first men's monthly, uh, he was the one that taught me about when we were talking about stress and anxiety and different bits like that. Mm. And he was saying it's a bow curve. So if you have no stress and anxieties, you'll be in depression because you've yeah. got nothing to get out of bed for. Yeah. There's nothing, no reason to do anything. And then it will rise and you'll hit a sweet spot. And that's the amount of stress that you can handle, if you know what I mean. The, the amount of stress where you feel like you're firing, you're on top. But you need stress in your life. It's a good thing. But then you can tip over the mm-hmm. other side where mm-hmm. it's too much. You're overwhelmed, you're overworked and you burn out. And then you can end up at the bottom of the bow curve that way as well. Yeah. And I've never thought of it like that, mm-hmm. but it is true. Because if you've got no stress in your life, what are you doing? Yeah. Like you ain't doing enough. Like mm-hmm. if you need to get to a point that works for you, but doesn't tip you over the edge of the other side, which like I say is a sweet spot. And fuck me, this year we've been backwards and forwards hundreds of times. Yeah, it's a balance. balance up. And trying like, to get home life right and enjoying time at home and yeah. partner and young baby and then fitting it all into a new business and then keeping then you're looking after yourself and it's a lot it's, it, but it's the balance aspect yeah it's full life is about balance so one it, thing i always liked was uh, it was just a picture and it was of a lifeline and all it was saying was if your life's not like this then you're not living if it's like this then you're dead i was just saying you've got to endure mm. them much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but then also got to take them down as well but it shows that you are alive shows yeah. that you're getting through everything that you need to do yeah yeah and then when you i don't know it's nice to know what you can handle as well, isn't it? Yeah. I, I like, like, do you know, like, you push out, like, whatever it is, but I mean in life in general. If you go see, like, I always think when you do take that time and look back, you think, fucking hell, I got through, like, that, all of that shit, I got through that. Mm-hmm. Whatever the next thing is, I'll do that as well. Yeah. Do you reckon stuff like that, to bring it back to one wellness, mm. do you reckon stuff like that can start with cold cold therapy i know we spoke a lot about cold therapy but that's it's such a big thing isn't it it's such a hard thing to do do you reckon wins like that can start it off for bigger wins i i could get that back for five minutes i could yeah, sit in that it's and a then, battle it's a, yeah. it's a battle my mate mentioned earlier he put up early the battle continues and it is a full battle <laughs> battles are there to be won right and push yeah. yourself push yourself through it that, when i read that i thought that is so true mm. it's a mental mental battle there's days where you just everyone likes to like you said about the comfort side of it but people are designed to it's just too easy for people mm-hmm. so by pushing yourself di- doing different stuff ice bath working out I read something on fasting fasting so good for you but everyone because we've got so um, used to having food for years they used to go for days about food yeah. but it's just too easy for everyone now you feel like you start on the worst I could wake up I'm starving not, not starving <laughs> I'm not starving. I can go till twelve o'clock. Yeah. You went till twelve o'clock yesterday. What's wrong with you? And your body's just like just grab something quick. Yeah, but it's not. It's just again a small battle, and then you try and. But to... before you know it, there's a fellow with a big box on his back. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Uber Eats on my phone. Easy, two swipes done. He's here. That's again, isn't it? It's comfort. It's easy. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's that's what I really like about like what you are doing. It's like it's pushing people's boundaries and letting them know that them limits that they feel like is their limit it's actually not their limit yeah. they can continue and they can t- continue continue like Would say, you seeing someone realise that as well mm-hmm. yeah. is the best feeling it's the best feeling you can ever get what do you like seeing someone literally wide eyed thinking fucking that like I've just done that yeah. like, do you know, like, and before it they were pet, like there's there's, uh, there's nothing like it mm. nothing like it and they're not they're not complicated achievements are they no no, no. Shit, no getting no. into a nice bath is not complicated it's yeah. sc- scary yeah 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 but it's not a co- you haven't got to do A B C D E F G to get yeah, there. No. You just get your kit on, get your speedos on, get in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That. It's the thought that it's generally yeah. the thought that people, yeah. like the two two of the closest people to me, my partner, my mum, could not think of anything worse. Got my mum in it the other day. She done five days, and mm. Jolie done a session on the opening day. I just saw his face would drop a little bit there when you never mentioned them. Oh, I know. know, Yeah, (laughs) Um, yeah, and they're two that I know wouldn't want to do it, and they've done it. Yeah. So it's just the thought of it. Mm. Would you ever do a cold therapy sort of saunas? I mess about. I mess about the shower. Yeah, but, that's that's, but, that's our proper fun we find out today. But <laughs> I thought like that shower's freezing, but then you've yeah. told me it's fifteen degrees. 
<laughs> it's just like I could get burnt off that. Actually, so. <laughs> it's the inconsistency of it. I think with the with the showers, mm. there's like because it's sort of like, oh yeah, like, yeah, you're all over the place. Whereas they say, yeah, what's that? What did the course say? Twenty four times colder getting a bath. I don't believe that because I find it sometimes on the face. I tried to turn it for a minute after. I'm like, oh, the worst minute being in there. Mm. You know what I mean, I'd think oh, I'll have a nice bath of work instead. But it's the inconsistency for me where it's all over. But yeah, and again, talk yourself out of it. Yeah, it's easy get to out. not do it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Enjoy, let's get yeah. to it. That's life, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's easier to not do it. And I'll yeah. be telling you not to run in, in like in a bathtub or a shower, but I run out of the shower if it gets too cold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm open them out because it's again it's next it's, level. It's like we were saying, though, isn't it? It's <laughs> being like you saying, would an ice bath? It, like it's not a magic pill. Mm. But if you're willing to put yourself out of your comfort zone and be open minded and try new things, that will spread into other areas of your life. Mm. So it might not be fucking hell, you're not going to get a nice bath and become a millionaire. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, that's not going to happen. But it will give you that kick to go and push yourself to do other things. And it can change your life in a lot of ways, but it can also make you better in a hell of a lot of ways as well. Yeah. If, if I look at it from my knee perspective, it is a block of graph, it's a percentage of it. So that didn't allow me to be running physio did the eating right mm-hmm. it is a percentage of your life that will help but you also have to be doing the other stuff yeah that's going to go with it otherwise i mean you can have a nice bath and then yeah, if you did you could go on, go on instagram and just be someone shit, in yeah. our sort of space and they tell you get in a nice bath and it will change your life and it will do all this and that for you like like this is the only thing you need it's not the case nothing's no. that straightforward mm. like it's not He's... but it can be an integral part of what makes it, makes it all happen. Yeah. And I think that's another thing as well, which I like about you, I'm not trying to book smoke up your asses a little bit, but <laughs> this is what's good about you. You are just speaking real and like where you were saying then about that's where people would just say, get in this ice bath, it's going to change your life, yeah. it's going to give you X, Y, and Z. That's, that's just a selling point for them, isn't it? three and a half thousand calories if you get in an ice bath. More yeah. than cardio. <laughs> that's <laughs> what I said. I, I felt like putting my own video up saying, no, it won't. But yeah, yeah just like, let people I, see I think, it. As you were talking there, I think it's got as we were speaking about anxiety, that obviously if there was an ice bath there and now it's on two degrees and you're going, creating a lot of, ang- a lot of yeah, anxiety yeah. in it. But once you've done it, you've not only got on the ice bath, but you've defeated that level of anxiety that's yeah. created. Mm-hmm. But so also- then next time, your anxiety, maybe your anxiety tolerance is higher. It's also as well, it, that is, it's the, it's the fact of building yourself up to it as well. Yeah. But when you go through a state of stress and anxiety, your body releases chemicals. Mm-hmm. And when you put your body through that, your body also releases them chemicals. Yeah. So when you come across stress and anxiety, things, things that can cause anxiety in your life, you're more resilient to that yeah. chemical in your body as well. So it's, it's not, there's, a, there's the mental win, but there's actually a physical win yeah. from it as well. Because it's like the weight in it, the resistance training. 100%. Yeah. And your body, like you said, your actual anxiety is creating its own resistance. Yeah, yeah. And getting stronger and better. Mm. Mm. So in a nutshell, get a nice bath. Get to one mile. It'll make make it a millionaire. (laughs) 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 I've got a heat under here. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like we've covered everything that you've said that you want to cover. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we've blown enough smoke up your ass. A little bit more. Just a little bit. Yeah, a little bit more. <laughs> just a little bit. Have you seen how good you look on that camera? Oh, thank you. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's um no, I like I am so happy you have come up today. You know, I really, really sure. and you have probably give me that little push that I'll actually start to go and do the cold therapy. Yeah. Yeah, cold therapy or well, whatever it is. Hold on, just <laughs> so you walk out that door and you're like. <laughs> yeah. Is there a place up here? Is there a nice bath place up here? There's a, there's one um. Just by edge lane, so just near the, the motorway where you just enter it there. You can drop him off there. Yeah, we'll take him on. I'll follow you. Isn't that, that is the push, right? There. Yeah, yeah th- there's one there. I don't know where other ones are, but there probably is some. Um, but I do need to start doing it now, especially where you were saying about uni. That was a big factor for me. Yeah, definitely. Well, how did you do that? Was it football? Yeah, so it was playing in the school. It, was it wasn't quite... proper football. No, it ain't. So I'm going to tell the story. I'm not ashamed about it a little bit. <laughs> um, it's just playing on the on the school ground, so just concrete playing with the kids. And I was in key stage three, like te- teaching assistant, and sort of like 13, 14. I was just playing footy with them, and um, it was just a little bit slippy. So I just went to plant my foot and then go and turn. My foot just went, and just, I had like the popping sound. And you're like, something's something to me, Nate. So like, I, I was like, Ugh. and then the, the teacher who was there, Gemma, she was like, you were right. So I was like, 
And I just went down. And I was like, oh, I think I've dislocated my knee or something like that. She said I went green and everything. But I was there. I was like, I'm fine. Like, I'm fine. And then we had an IT woman working there, Jenny. And but she was also all paramedic, so it was cool. all right to have an air on site. <laughs> she came out, she went, Yeah, I think I think it's your tendon. But she had like one of them like dry sense of humours. So she made like a joke out to it. And I said, oh, I'll be back in tomorrow. And I was off for four months. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worry of it being yeah. especially I'm looking to get back into it when You'll towards never them get back. You play football again. Not a chance. Hundred percent. If they have me back. <laughs> yeah, it's been a couple of years, man. <laughs> um but yeah. Self employed, like I could not do four months. I've had to go four months because you fuck. Get myself in the Maldives or something, or somewhere nice and hot, hopefully. But you were only six days into the job, weren't the actual job? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, five, yeah, five, 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 five. Five. <laughs> yeah, it was the Monday morning of the f- second week, and he was uh, off for four no. months. Yeah. Great, that, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I must admit, I, I did the Maya the school for keeping you on where you could yeah. have just let you Yeah, know. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. play to him. Yeah. Well, as they knew from day one, I was a keeper. I was, yeah, I was. <laughs> yeah, probably got gloves in. Can I just ask about, obviously you're talking about therapies and all that, have you ever touched on grounding? Oh, I haven't done it myself, Yeah. but it was only af- uh, after a woman, Kerry, who comes into our place, to add, was uh, talking about it, but no, it's something I've been looking to try and do. I've got, I got a mat. It's got it's proper size. Uh, the pemf mat things. No, no, just no. the the ground and mat, which is just looks like this mm. here, and it's got a wire off it that just gets connected to the earth. I don't know. Is your thing red? You can tell it's only his fifth day on the job. <laughs> Get Jay back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are you like? Yeah. This is the first time. Oh, no, we're here, man. <laughs> yeah, but I got one. Oh, dude, put on the knees. Put on the knees. I can see the difference. Like, mm. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. all that, really. And the example that we give to everyone is Lee's mum. She's had surgery back on Bridget and then years ago. And of course, all we Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah, that's it, Steve. Probably a good, that's fine. It's a good thing we're at the end now, isn't it? <laughs> I'll fix it. Well, like I said, nice one for coming on. Like, I'm ready. You're, you're welcome back anytime when we've got availability. <laughs> but you're welcome back to come on whenever it is, even if you're doing things um, and you just want to come on and talk about it more, get yourselves out there more. Um, but I will hold you to coming down. Get yourself down. I will. Yeah, and he's going to um, take me through the day. Hold me on like that. <laughs> we got a couple therapy. I'll go with you. We'll interview yeah, you on that one when you're in there. <laughs> <laughs> but um, have you got any questions that you just want to say to us or do you have anything else that you want to say? All, yeah, good. all good. Yeah. All good. Thanks for having us. Thank yeah, you. it's been an absolute it's a pleasure. Have you got any more questions about grounding? No, not at all. Thank you. No, no that's that absolutely sound. <laughs> Well, lads, thank you. Thank you. And I wish you all the best going forward. I think you've got an absolutely special day, you know. I really do. Thank you. Cheers. Go on then, Father.